So now we're going to start Chapter 25, EM Induction and EM Waves. EM means electromotive. All right, so first section is induced currents. All right, so take a look at this. Now, notice it looks like you have a circuit here, but you don't really have a closed circuit. You've got this iron ring here, so these wires aren't connected. We now know that a current can create a magnetic field. Can a magnetic field create a current? Michael Faraday experimented with two coils of wire wrapped around an iron ring in an attempt to generate a current from a magnetic field. Faraday's experiment did not generate a steady current. However, in the instant he closed the switch in the circuit, there was a brief indication of current. He realized that a current was generated only if the magnetic field was changing as it passed through the coil. Faraday then set up a series of experiments to test this hypothesis. All right, so take a look. You got the coil, you got the bar magnet, you've got um, an ammeter, or they call it the current meter. Faraday pushed a bar magnet into a coil of wire. This action caused a momentary deflection of the needle in the current meter, although holding the magnet inside the coil had no effect. So when it was moving through, okay, we saw a deflection. When it was just stationary in there, there was no deflection of the needle. A quick withdrawal of the magnet deflected the needle in the other direction. Faraday found that there is a current in a coil of wire if and only if the magnetic field passing through the coil is changing. The current in a circuit due to a changing magnetic field is called an induced current. The creation of an electric current by a changing magnetic field is an example of electromagnetic induction. Motional EMF. Remember EMF, electromotive force, really is the voltage of a battery. Remember it's a little, the voltage of a battery is a little bit less. So the motional EMF is the voltage produced by the motion of a conductor in a magnetic field. All right. So as a conductor moves through a uniform magnetic field, the charge carriers inside the conductor also move with the same velocity. All right, so let's use our third right-hand rule that's going to give us magnetic force, and it's going to show that the magnetic force is directed upwards. All right, so this is our conductor, and we're going to have our positive charge carriers inside the conductor. Our magnetic field, you can see B, is pointing into the page. So we're going to take our fingers of our right hand, point them into the page. Our thumb shows us the direction of motion of these charged particles, okay? So we're going to say they're going to have the same motion as the conductor. So they're going to go to the right. Your palm is pushing up. So you know that magnetic force or that force due to the magnetic field is in the upward direction. Now, in the some of the slides are going to say F sub B, indicating that that's the force due to the magnetic field. I might change those on some of the slides. It'll say um, F sub M, indicating the magnetic force. So you can see the magnetic force here is directed up on these positive charge particles. Since V is perpendicular, okay, the velocity vector is perpendicular to the magnetic field vector. We can use that equation to figure out magnetic force that we've looked at before, that it's equal to Q times V times the magnetic field strength. Now, remember, we're going to say FB or FM is going to equal the magnetic force. Positive charges are free to move and drift upward due to that magnetic force. So what's going to happen? You're going to get a collection of positive charges up top, leaving the bottom here um, negative. So as positive charges move upward, there is a charge separation creating an electric field in a conductor. And once you have you know, that electric field, you're going to have a potential difference, all right? And remember, if the positives are up here, then the electric field lines are going to be directed down because they're always the direction a positive charge will take in a particular electric field. 
The charge separation continues until the electric force balances the magnetic force because now you've got an electric force, okay, in the downward direction, in the same direction as the electric field, and you're going to have the magnetic force going up. So we're going to set them equal. And if we set them equal, you're going to see the equation we used to use to get the electric force is Q times the electric field strength. The equation now for magnetic force is QVB. So no net force and therefore no motion. The electric field strength at equilibrium is, now the Qs will cancel. So you're basically getting that the electric field strength is going to be equal to that velocity multiplied by the magnetic field strength. The magnetic force on the charge carriers in a moving conductor creates an electric field, E equals VB, inside the conductor. Now recall the strength of an electric field in a conductor. Remember we had strength of an electric field um, between two charge parallel plates, and we basically said it was the voltage divided by that separation, usually a D or sometimes we see it as an R. Well, we also said to get the electric field strength in a conductor, it's going to be E equals delta V divided by the length of that conductor. Now, if we manipulate, because we're trying to figure out the motional EMF, okay, we're trying to figure out this voltage, let's put it in terms of that delta V. Delta V then is equal to the electric field strength times the length of the conductor. Now, remember, we've also know that the electric field strength is equal to V times the magnetic field strength. So using those two equations here, the motional EMF of a conductor moving perpendicular to the magnetic field is, all right, remember EMF, a lot of times we show it in the, with this symbol, epsilon, okay? That's really your voltage. So if it's equal to E times L, and then we know E is equal to V times B, we have an equation. So the EMF due to the motion of conductor is going to be the speed of the conductor perpendicular to the magnetic field um, times the length of the conductor times the magnetic field strength. So this equation, it's written this way, is written on the AP reference table. All right, there are two ways to generate an EMF. Now, Chemical reactions in a battery, they separate the charges and cause a potential difference between the ends. This is a chemical EMF, all right? The electric field inside the battery. Magnetic forces separate the charges and cause a potential difference between the ends. This is a motional EMF, all right? So remember, when we talked about the direction of the magnetic force, it was upward. So it would push those char positive charges up, causing the separation of positives and negatives, therefore developing an electric field, all right? And this is the electric field inside the moving conductor. Induced current in a circuit. A moving conductor would have an EMF, but it cannot sustain a current because the charges have nowhere to go. If the moving conductor is in a circuit, a current can be sustained. One way to create the circuit is to add a fixed U-shaped conducting rail along which the wire slides. All right, so here we have this U-shaped conducting um, you know, wire, and we can slide our conductor along. All right, so we know the way it's positioned Still, if we use our right-hand rule, our fingers are going in, our thumbs going to the right, our palms pushing up, we're going to have a collection of positive charge here, negative charge there. Now, what will happen is the positive charges, you know, conventional current is going to move in this direction along this um, loop here. So positive charge carriers in the wire are pushed upward by the magnetic force. The charge carriers flow around the conducting loop as an induced current. All right, this wire has resistance R. The conducting rail is fixed in place. The length of the wire, this wire, is free to move. Assume that the wire is moving along the rail at a constant speed. Therefore, no net force is acting on the wire. So it's moving at a constant speed. 
So that would mean if it's moving at a constant speed, when we're going to say two, we said that the uh, electric force is going to be equal to the magnetic force. In a circuit, the charges that are pushed towards the ends of a moving conductor in a magnetic field can continue to flow around the circuit. The moving wire acts like a battery in a circuit. The current in the circuit is an induced current. The induced current for a circuit, including a wire with resistance R, is given by Ohm's law. All right, so I equals normally V over R. This is going to be that induced, that motional EMF over our resistance, and we already established that that motional EMF is VLB divided by R. Induced current in a circuit. In a circuit, a moving wire connected to rails in a magnetic field will carry an induced current I. The magnetic field will exert a force on the induced current in the moving wire in the direction opposite the wire's motion. All right, so we're going to take a look at the third right-hand rule now. Remember, now we have current that's going through this loop, and it's coming back, coming through. So B here is into the page, so let's use our third right-hand rule. Our fingers of our right hand are going into the page or into the screen. I flows up the wire, so let's put our thumb now is going to go up. That means the, our palm is facing to the left. So we're going to see now that we're going to have the magnetic force because of this induced current that's going through this conductor, this wire, that force is going to be directed to the left. This magnetic drag now will cause the wire to slow down and stop unless an equal and opposite force pulls the wire. Remember, we want that wire is moving along the rail at a constant speed. So that force pull is going to have to equal that magnetic force that now has developed because of this induced current. So the induced current flows through the wire. The magnetic force on the current carrying wire is opposite the motion. And you, a pulling force to the right must balance the magnetic force to keep the wire moving at a constant speed. So force pull has to equal the magnetic force. So the magnetic force on a current carrying wire, we have the equation, and this is on our reference table, ILB. The equation for induced current, I equals BLV over R. So force pull equals force magnetic, which we know ILB well, now what we're going to do, we're going to substitute in for the induced current, the VLB, just manipulated a little bit, divided by R times LB. So we end up getting V else, the length of the conductor squared times the magnetic field strength squared divided by that resistance. Because there is current, power is dissipated in the resistance of the rail. Pulling to the right takes work. This is a power input to the system. So recall, we know power equals force times an average speed or velocity. And we said we're going to be pulling this um, current carrying wire with an average speed along this rail. The power provided to a circuit by a force pulling on the wire is... Okay, so power input, we know power is force times V. Now, we've already established um, what that force was going to be equal to, okay, and then multiplied by V, so now we have V squared in this equation also. The resistance in the circuit causes the power in the circuit to dissipate, and that power dissipated, we know I squared times R, so we have another equation. The velocity squared times the length of the conductor squared times the magnetic field strength squared divided by the resistance. All right, generators. A generator is a device that converts mechanical energy to electric energy. 
Instead of moving a straight wire through a magnetic field, it is more practical to rotate a wire, a coil of wire. As the coil rotates, one edge always moves upward through the electric field, while the other edge moves downward. The motion of the wire induces a current, which is then removed by brushes that press up against rotating slip rings. All right, so here's a picture of a generator. All right, and so what we can do is you have um, a permanent magnet, you have a coil, and what we can do, we can generate um, current. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show a couple videos to you during class to kind of show you this and the fact that the magnetic force is going to change direction depending on which way the coil is rotating. So as the coil in a generator rotates, the sense of EMF, electromotive force, changes, giving a sinusoidal variation of EMF as a function of time. The alternating sign of the voltage produces what we call an alternating current, AC. Now, there's AC generators, there's DC generators. AC and DC generators serve different primary purposes. This is especially evident in the type of devices they each power. Typically, AC generators power home electrical appliances and small motors such as juicers, vacuum cleaners, and food mixers. They have a voltage of 120 volts. So we were going to use, if our power goes out, we're going to use AC generators. However, DC generators are used to power large electric motors, such as those used in subway systems. Batteries used for off-grids are also charged using direct current generators because they provide efficient and reliable energy supply, but they're going to be at a lower voltage. They're not going to be at 120 volts. In an AC generator, the coil through which current flows is fixed and the magnet usually moves. The south and north poles of the magnet make the current flow in opposite directions, thereby creating an alternating current. In contrast, the coil in a DC generator is not fixed. Rather, it rotates in a fixed field. The two ends of the coil are attached to the commutator, which balances the charges to and from the generator, thus resulting in a current that does not alter direction. Okay, so I have just one problem for you to try. Like I said, we're going to watch some videos during class. I'm just giving you some basic information on generators. You really don't need to know generators. If you want to know a little bit more about generators and transformers, that information is found in Chapter 26.